With me now is Ingrid Wolfenden and Loki, but before we meet Loki, we're gonna meet Ingrid. Ingrid is married to Ross, but not only that, you guys actually work together on a day-to-day -day basis, don't you? Yes, we do. We have five horses on the farm. One of them's a baby, and I used to be much more involved than I am now, but I'm still working with him every morning, even though he does most of the work. <laughs> So we want to get a little bio on you. Uh, I know you've lived a whole bunch of different places. So we'll start with, you were born in Pennsylvania, right? Yes, I was born and raised until I was eight years old in New Milford, Pennsylvania. And then you went to California? Well, my dad and my brother turned out to be also a blacksmith, who many of the horsemen probably know, Roy Proctor. And so we moved quite a bit. And when I was 13, my grandfather, he's Norwegian, and he wanted me to meet the family that we had in Norway. So he took me there for a month. And I came home and I said, I'm sorry, Mom and Dad, but when I'm 18, I'm moving, because <laughs> I, I love Norway. I was living in Norway for seven years, and I came home to meet my Mom and Dad, because it had been like five years since I even saw them. So I was gonna stay for a little while. And I started grooming, and I met Ross while we were in line ready to get our licenses because the meet just started at Los Alamitos and I had just gotten dumped by a horse because I was sitting on the cart ponying them and he decided to go back to the barn and he took me with him. So that was a lovely way to meet a man, isn't it? <laughs> so now we're a couple in California and he had only come out to Los Alamitos for the meet, which was three months. So he was coming back to New Jersey and so he took me with him. <laughs> That's how we ended up in New Jersey. And 23 years later, now we're in Delaware, and we have a 19-year-old son, Riley. Not only do you love the horses, but I know you love dogs, too. <laughs> and so you love riding, and this is where we're really going to talk about some fun stuff. Ingrid has written three books. So the first one we're going to talk about is somewhere out there. Starring a dog, not Loki, <laughs> but tell us about Somewhere Out There, uh, about the dog, about how you got the idea. Somewhere Out There came about simply from a day at the beach. Um, I was taking pictures of Riley, he was 10 years old, and at the time we had a boxer dog named Dobby, and it was so funny to see them playing and to see how the dog reacted to different you know, little creatures at the beach and, and Ross picked him up and brought him in the ocean and he was all so scared to be in the ocean. And when I got home, I was like, wow, this could be a story. This could be something fun. I would say this is for children between infancy to read to them up to maybe first grade. Um, like I said, it's, it was a day at the beach with our family, with our dog, our boxer dog, Dobby and I ended up taking pictures and sending them to an artist in the Netherlands who manipulated them into paintings. In the end of the book, it's like what, it's uh, the dog's perspective of what he thought of the day and what, was, what he found at the beach. I kind of forgot about it for some time. And so in 2015, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And so obviously that's life alter altering. <laughs> and um, I went underwent several different surgeries and that caused like a snowball effect of a lot of other things going wrong. And I thought, I'm gonna finish this book. I gotta finish this book. At least I'm gonna leave something for my son to show about grandma, you know? And so that's how, I, how that happened. And in the meantime, I got a great relationship with an integrative doctor who's just amazing and he's basically kept me alive these years and he told me, you're good, you carry on now. And so I started writing this next book, and then I, for this one, I thought, I, I need a real artist for this one. Ah, the rest is history. It's been so much fun. Now, now we're actually work, working on book four. I had never illustrated a book before, so I wasn't really sure, and I kind of interviewed her before the process, and I was so impressed with how much um, research and homework she had done about the entire process of getting a children's book out and her respect for the artist because right away I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to illustrate something or do something for free for exposure 
you know. And she right up front said, I want to pay you for this. I know your work is valuable and I want to, you to know I value what artists do and I, I appreciate um, the work you're going to put into this. So I figured she gets it. Ingrid had such a vision for what she wanted for her illustrations for her books that we made weekly appointments where we, I would give her a half hour. She came so prepared and she'd have photos for me to look at and she, she, of course she's a writer so she's good with words. So I could see what was in her head. The second book is My Name is Penelope? Yes. Okay. So, and that stars Loki, yes, right? Yes, Loki. <laughs> I brought Loki over to meet Kathy. Loki, and, look over here. And she said, oh, <laughs> he's so cute. He needs to be on every page. So that was totally her idea. And I was like, okay, that's fun. And then the little girl is your grandmother. Is yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Inside the book, there's um, an old picture of my grandmother when she was three. And um, Kathy kind of sneaked Loki in next to her. This one is all kinds of memories from my growing up and my mother's and my grandmother's. There's actually a picture of my grandmother in Norway right there. And my illustrator is so clever, clever that she stuck Loki in there for me. This one I would say is uh, good to probably third grade. It is quite simple. It's written in a, the poetic, a poetic style. It has both um, traditional Norwegian things in it, but it's basically about a little girl and her dog, and they have a, a different adventure every day. And the third book. What's the name of the third book? And so what's the that third about? book is completely different. It's hilarious because it was my husband's idea. So he told me about this story, and he was being serious, but it, his family was on vacation at the South Island, Kaikoura, New Zealand, and his little old grandmother loved reading and knitting, and she went, she took her book out by the, the shore and um, to read her book, and she ended up sitting on a seal that she thought was a big rock, because they're huge there. Well, she sat down and it grunted, and she went flying through the book and ran, you know, 80-year-old woman running, and I go, oh, wow, there's my next book right there. <laughs> so I just took that and ran, and Kathy and I have had so much fun with it. This is the one, Roma Enid and Her Marvelous Rocks, and Roma Enid actually is the name of Ross's grandmother, who gave us the whole idea of this book. She has many crazy adventures through it. She uh, lives in a place where there's so many seals, but she believes that they are rocks because she can't see very well. And so she believes that there are magical rocks in her yard and they move every day. This one, I would say it's not, it's more of a story. It's not written in the poetic style. And I would say it would probably be good to um, fifth grade. Of course, it would be very easy for some in fifth grade. And the fourth one, tell me about, now you've written the fourth one or you're I'm writing I'm working on the, the ending. Fourth. Okay. Only because Ross wants me to make it a series and I'm a little scared of that because I never have gone there before. So I'm contemplating the ending. Do I want to end it or do I want it to carry on? But um, there's a man named Boyan Slat who is probably many of you have heard of. He's been on the news a lot and he is trying to clean up the ocean outside um, California. There's a, a huge garbage pit. It's bigger than Texas, I think they said. He's constructed this way of collecting all the plastic, getting it and taking it to the recycling facilities. So I thought, you know, I want kids to know that. So I have all these creatures that I'm trying to get the kids really involved with, like we're gonna have Tammy the sea turtle you know, I want them to be able to fall in love with these different sea creatures and think to themselves, oh, we don't want to hurt them. Right, you right. Know. And give them personalities and a yeah. personal relationship yeah. with them. Yeah, one of them will be yeah. Heather. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of what I would be. Can oh, I be a blowfish? You want to be a blowfish? blowfish? Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be Heather the blowfish. You know, I have one in the story, so that's perfect. <laughs> I do. Really? Oh, yeah, she God. gets upset about her friends getting caught 
and she blows up. Oh my gosh, that's perfect, that's perfect. <laughs> Just to give a plug for reading in general, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure a lot of people realize, um, not only is it great for your imagination, and then you're spending time with your parents as they read to you, or the parent is trying to get the child to read to them. It helps with test scores and just imagination, and I mean, all these really great things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's very cool. Like, somebody that's writing this, I mean, the effect that you're having on the next generation. It's been a lot of fun for it being kind of a mistake <laughs> in, the, in the beginning. I didn't mean for it to happen, and it's been fun. I'm so glad I did it. All right, very cool. Before we go, I really would like to give you a plug where people can get your books. Okay, so they are available on Amazon and Ingram Spark. All of them, you can get soft cover or hard cover, whichever you like. Very cool. Oh, so happy to have you on the show. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for having me, Heather. Oh, thank you, Ingrid. And for putting up with Mr. Pan. Oh. <laughs>